Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our study of Second Kings. Here in Second Kings chapter 1, we see the very short reign of Ahaziah. Ahaziah is the son of Ahab. And in these 18 verses of this chapter, I want you to notice a few things that really seem to stand out as things that, that we need to learn from when it comes to making application of things found in this chapter to our lives. The first one is found at the very beginning of the chapter when you see Ahaziah is going to fall through the lattice of the, his uh, upper room in Samaria. And he is going to become injured and uh, bedridden from all indications. And he is going to send out messengers to find out what's going to happen and whether or not he's going to get better. The problem is he is going to send messengers to the wrong source. He is going to send messengers to those who are the servants of Belzebub. Uh, who is the god of Ekron. Now, Ekron is one of the cities of the Philistines. And so this is going to be one of the gods of the Philistines. Now, remember that as the son of Ahab and Jezebel, Ahaziah has been brought up to believe in many different gods and to believe in many different sources of help and of hope, none of which are the God of Israel. And so he is going to send messengers there. God is going to send Elijah to intercept those messengers and to ask a question. That question is, is there not a God in Israel, or is it because there is not a God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Beelzebub? And the answer, of course, is rhetorical. Of course there is a God in Israel. Of course there is the God of Israel who is available and would be more than happy to answer his question. But instead, Ahaziah is going to go to the wrong source, and it's going to cost him. You see, sometimes we do the same thing. Sometimes we are ones who, when we have problems or when we are looking for answers, instead of going to the right source for help, we go everywhere else instead. We go to friends, we go to family, we go to the internet, we go to everything else as our answer to look for the answer instead of going to God and seeking his word and what he would have us to do. And then we wonder why we don't get the help that we want or the help that we desire. God here tells Ahaziah he has gone to the wrong source. Now, Ahaziah is going to respond by sending captains with 50 men each uh, after Elijah to bring him in and to, in essence, be able to interrogate him for what it is that he sent back to the messengers. The second thing that we see in this chapter is the importance of humility. The first two captains are going to go out doing nothing more than asserting their authority and giving orders to Elijah about what it is that he is supposed to do. They will call him the man of God, and yet at the same time, they will refuse to recognize the power of the God that he serves. He will then give them a reminder by calling down fire from heaven on the first two groups. But the third captain comes not with an abundance of uh, command and an abundance of authority, but rather he comes in humility. The third captain falls on his knees before Elijah and pleads with him, saying, please let my life and the life of these 50 servants of yours be precious in your sight. The third captain understands the power of Elijah and the power of the God that Elijah serves. And he comes to him with humility, not because he considers himself greater than Elijah, but because he has been sent with a task. And God is going to tell Elijah to go down 
with him. Humility takes us a long way in life. Being willing to not boost ourselves up above others, but instead coming with an attitude of humility can make all of the difference in the world when it comes to how others respond to us. And we need to understand the importance of humility, both in our relationship with others and in our relationship with God. You know, there are people who come to God like the king, like the captains uh, come with these 50. They come giving orders. They come telling God how things are going to be, and then they're upset and they're shocked when things don't work that way. Humility is a very important aspect in our lives. But then in the third place, I want us to notice at the end of the chapter how that the Lord's promise was fulfilled. And this is going to be kind of in, in two places this promise is given. The first one is given at the beginning of the chapter where he says Ahaziah is not going to recover. But the second one goes back to the days of Ahab where the promise is going to be given that Ahab's line is going to end not with him, because of his uh, time when he humbled himself before the Lord, but rather it is going to come in the time of his son, and that at the time of his son, his line would continue no longer. And that is exactly what is going to happen when it comes to Ahaziah. Ahaziah is going to be the end of Ahab's line. And then we read that Jehoram will become king in his place. A new lineage, a new line is going to take the throne in Israel. As I look through 2 Kings chapter 1, these are some of the things that I see, some of the lessons that I see when it comes to what happens here and how it applies to us. I hope they're things that are beneficial to you. We'll come back next time and we will begin looking at 2 Kings chapter 2 as we continue this saga of the kings of Israel. I hope you'll join us then. But until then, have a great day.